Reaper is a DAW that, in addition to what any other DAW does, allows you to go much further, customizing the work environment and optimizing it for each user's workflow. In this episode, you will see how to get the visual toolbars for the effects. What do they are? Here is an example. An effect can be found very easily by seeing it than by having to remember its name. With VS2 and 3, there is not any standard that imposes the implementation of a graphic artwork by the manufacturer, from which the DAW can draw for the automatic construction of a visual toolbar. Some DAW has this feature, but limited to native plugins. All those of third parties are excluded. In Reaper, it's possible to build visual toolbars that integrate both native plugins and those of third parties. I'll tell you right away, this is not a quick thing. It's time-consuming. But the time spent on this work is paid off quickly in the choice of the plugin, as you have clearly seen above. In any case, do as you wish. Not any physician ordered you to do it. This tutorial is made for those who need and intend to do this job, and for those who really intend to learn something. The other ones can watch other tutorials that are more relevant to their needs, but they can't say, I didn't know it, nobody ever said it, Reaper doesn't do it, and such nonsense. Ok, let's go on. The first step is to create actions for inserting the desired effect with a single mouse click, on the selected track or on the selected item. In fact, we know that on Reaper, effects and effects chains can be positioned both on the tracks and on a single item. Create a track, click the effects button and the window with all the effects opens. Look for the effects you are interested in, right click and select create shortcut. Do nothing at this point, click on cancel. Actually, an action that allows you to insert the effect has been created. Carry out the same operation for all the effects you are interested in having them in the toolbar. The action created can be seen here. Actions, show action list, write insert effects followed by the name of the effects if required. Here it is. If you click on run, the effect is added to the selected track. Now assign this action to a toolbar. To do this, you can follow what has already been said in the video above and its link is below in the description. But for convenience, I'll show you this to you once again. Go to the main toolbar, right click, customize toolbar. Since you are interested in having a dedicated toolbar, go to the drop down menu and select one of the empty floating toolbars. Remember its number as you will need it later. As you can see here, there are my ready-made visual toolbars. Delete Edit Me. You don't need it. You can use the Retitle button to rename the toolbar so that it's more recognizable to you. I say again, remember its number. Right-click, Insert Action, or go down below and click on Add. It's the same thing. Search for the action, Select it or select all the actions you have created and close. The toolbar has been created. It has buttons, each referring to an effect for which you have created the action. By clicking it, the related effects is added in the selected track or item. But that's not all. Now we need to do the graphics. The graphic design is time-consuming, but it's worth, and doesn't require you to do all in one go. First and foremost, you should know that in Reaper, every graphic element has a standard to respect, 
There are two image formats for the toolbar buttons, JPEG and PNG. Maybe the GIF format also works, but I have never tested it, since it is now an outdated format, not comparable in quality to a PNG. The JPEG images, no matter how large you make them in terms of size, are then reduced to standard dimensions as you see in the default toolbar. PNG images, on the other hand, can be larger in size. The graphic is captured by taking a screenshot of the plugin. In Windows it's very easy. You can use either the snipping tool or pressing Windows key, and Shift and S, and then select the plugin rectangle. Automatically it's copied into memory and you can paste it into your graphical application. Each image is divided into three consecutive regions of the same size. They can be square or rectangular, containing transparencies, and therefore even if rectangular, with circular designs, etc. But what matters is that they must be formed by three identical blocks arranged horizontally. The left block displays the at rest icon. The central one displays the icon when the mouse is hovering. The one on the right side displays the icon when clicked. Here is an example of an icon file related to the Rembrini Amp 8180. Here are how it works in the toolbar. Of course, the colorimetry is at your will. I prefer to make it red cast when I hover it and to turn green cast when I click it. Any programmer is fine for graphics. You can use GIMP, which is free and very good, as well as Affinity Photo or Photoshop, of course, and also its free equivalent that you find online, which is called PhotoP. The URL is www.photop.com and it's written in the description below. When you have done with your PNG, name it in such a way that it's easy to select it in the toolbar. I suggest what I did. Name of the toolbar, followed by plugin name, followed by the type, if any, for example, mono or stereo, as in this example, and any other details, if ever. Using the underscore character in place of the space, I was fine with that. If you find a better way, Good for you! Then go to Options, Show Reaper Resource Path in Explorer Finder, Data, Toolbar Icons, and drag it into there. Here you see mine once. Now go back to the toolbar you created. Go to the main toolbar, right-click, open toolbar, select the toolbar to edit. Right-click, customize toolbar. For each effect, select it, right-click, change icon, or below the icon button, change icon. It's the same thing. The selection window opens. As you can see, the icons are many. So instead of looking for the one you need by scrolling through them all, just start typing the file name in the filter field. When you find it, double click and then click on save and the icon is assigned to the button. By hovering the mouse over it and clicking it, here it is added. Now you can assign a shortcut to open or close the toolbar. Actions, show action list, right toolbar, and go down until you find the toolbar you have customized among the open close actions. 
You recognize it by the number it had and which you have to note of at the beginning. Highlight the toolbar, click on Add. Decide which shortcut to assign. Here I give Ctrl and 5 from the numeric keypad. As you can see, the shortcut has been assigned. From now on, every time I press Ctrl and 5, the toolbar is activated. And press it again, it closes. Consider becoming a Patreon or pay me a beer, since in the end, this video was useful to you, right? For one or the other choice, the links are here below in the description box. That's all folks, see you next time!